Hello friends, hope all of you are doing well. In today's session, we are going to discuss a very important topic from aspects of language, your MEG4 paper from the MEG program. Uh, the topic name is generative grammar. Now this topic is very, very important, not only from your examination perspective, but also for the competitive exams. If you think of sitting for competitive exams like NET or something else, this topic is very important. So today we'll break it down. I'll try to make things simpler, as simple as I can. And for the sake of the convenience of the video, I have divided the entire session into particular segments. In the first part, obviously, we are going to discuss about the origin of generative grammar. In the second part, we are going to discuss some of the important terminologies that we need to know in order to get through generative grammar. Then we are going to discuss different types of grammar and following generative grammar definition, of course, which is very vital for your answer, which you are going to write in your exams. Then it will be followed by certain concepts regarding generative grammar. And the final segment of today's session will be discussing tree diagram. Now, this is also something new and I'll just give you a hint of tree diagram in this session. I'll obviously come up with a dedicated video regarding tree diagram. But in this session, we'll only discuss, uh, we'll just scratch the surface of tree diagram concepts here. So without any further ado, let's get started with the video. So formal linguistics started with Noam Chomsky, who was a student of Zalik Harris concerned to formulate a general theory of grammatical structure. Now this name, this person in particular, Noam Chomsky is very vital for the concept of generative grammar. We'll come to know why. So what happened in 1957, linguist Noam Chomsky published a groundbreaking book called Syntactic Structure. Also important for your examination perspective, you have to remember the name of the book that got published in 1957. That is Syntactic Structure. So this book proposed a couple of concepts. It proposed a novel idea that all human beings may be born with an innate understanding of how language works. Now this idea, this concept is very vital because this lays the foundation of the entire concept of generative grammar here. Now here Chomsky's idea has been since widely accepted. Formal linguistics can be explained as the study of grammar or the development of theories as to how language works and how it is organized. Formal linguistics compare grammar of different languages and by identifying and studying the elements common among them, seek to discover the most effective way to describe the language in general. All right, so formal linguistics, the concept which lies underlies in this entire top topic is that comparison of different languages. All right. And by identifying and studying the elements common among them, it seeks to discover the most effective way to describe the language in general. The ultimate goal of this process is to understand and explain language structure through genetically shared language universals. That is to form universal grammar. Now, I know that a lot of you might be getting confused a little bit here. But just remember this vital point that formal linguistics, when we say formal linguistics, it's nothing but comparison of different languages where we try to seek and where we try to find out the common elements between these different language so that we can describe the basic structure of language. And this actually give rise to a universal grammar. We'll talk about universal grammar in a different session. But Noam Chomsky obviously believed in a universal grammar concept, the development of a theory to explain how the human brain processes language all right now you might be thinking that how what we were discussing formal linguistics uh, has a connection with generative grammar so within the formal formal linguistics one of the most important and influential school of thought is referred to as generative grammar all right so it's a school of thought okay the generative grammar is nothing but a school of thought which lies within the formal linguistics. That is the reason why I was talking about formal linguistics. So I think in a couple of minutes you have understood that what was, uh, what led to the origin of generative grammar. Uh, next, the rise of American structuralism gave way to the generative grammar which was different from that of structuralism. Very, very important point. And also I want you to recommend that if you have not watched my previous video regarding European and American structuralism, I highly recommend that you watch that in order to understand the connection between these two things. Okay. Now, uh, generative grammar is obviously different from American structuralism, but you can see that what is happening here, the rise in American structuralism, it led to the evolvement of evolving of generative grammar. 
द लेटर डेवलपमेंट ऑफ थॉट्स एंड डिस्कशन इन द जेनरेटिव ग्रामर लेट टू द इवोल्यूशन ऑफ ट्रांसफॉर्मेशनल जेनरेटिव ग्रामर now this is also a different concept but again a very important point point that you should be writing in your exams that the development in the thoughts and discussions in the generative grammar that led to the evolution of transformational generative grammar now you have to understand that the question regarding the generative grammar usually comes for short notes then it will come for 5 marks and you have to be very concise and precise while answering the short notes for 5 marks but if it comes for essay type question regarding Uh, say suppose for 20 marks then you have to be very much descriptive in uh, in your approach and also i recommend that you 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 know approve a segment wise approach in your answers like i am discussing the entire session entire topic in segments so it will be better if you break down your answer into lot of segments like origin of gener generative grammar then what are the popular terminologies that you need to know in order to understand generative grammar the various type of grammars the definition of generative grammar as a whole and the other concepts so it's up to you how you construct your answer but do ensure that you are constructing answer in such a way that you attempt for 20 marks because obviously when you are attempting for 20 marks your answer should be around 350 to 500 words all right so the next segment of today's session is terminologies basically we are going to discuss about only two words which will help us to understand the concept of generative grammar as a whole The first is syntax. The word syntax has been derived from the Greek word syntaxis, which means arrangement. It implies the way in which words are arranged so as to reveal relationships of meanings within sentences and often between them. It studies combination of words including word structure and sentence structure. So all you need to remember here for the word syntax is that it has been derived from the greek word syntaxis which means arrangement and basically it's a connecting link between the sentence between the words of a sentence which makes the sentence more sensible to understand all right and also it has a predominant role in combinations of words including word structure and sentence structure the next terminology that we need to know is the word grammar itself so basically the grammar word is a word that confuses considerably okay it has been approached and defined differently by different scholars and schools of linguistics etymologically the term grammar goes back through french and latin to greek word grammatica or grammatica which may be translated as the art of writing okay but for the long time this term has been used very closely to incorporate the whole study of language now in today's world if i say if i ask you that what does a grammar means basically all of you will be saying that it's a set of rules which helps us to construct construct a particular sentence more accurately and which makes more sense in today's generation but prior to this we are talking about the time when it was like in 50s and 40s like you know the 20th century the early 20th century the mid 20th century the word grammar was confused considerably okay and it was taken differently it was taken a different approach to understand the word grammar by different scholars and the schools of linguistics so bottom line is that it is nothing but the art of writing okay so the next segment of today's session is different types of grammar so various types of grammar do exist and let us have a quick overview of the different types of grammar that exist the different types are which are used in the linguistics in the world of linguistics are traditional grammar prescriptive grammar descriptive grammar sentence interpretative grammar sentence producing grammar reference grammar contrastive grammar theoretical grammar structural grammar phrase structural grammar generative grammar which we are discussing in today's session of course transformational grammar now we know that the evolution of generative grammar led to the transformational generative grammar so we will not be discussing that one in details here then we have stratificational grammar and communicative grammar so we see that we have lot of different types of grammar here but our focus primarily in this session will be only generative grammar so let us now understand what is generative grammar so according to wikipedia in linguistics generative grammar is grammar the set of language rules that indicates the structure and interpretation of sentences that native speakers of a language accept as belongings of their language so very important and obviously you have to write this in your exams if it comes so primarily we need to understand that generative grammar is nothing but a grammar you have to understand that couple of 
seconds back when I was discussing about the different types of grammar, we have seen that there are various kinds of grammar and all these different types of grammar differ from each other from a very thin line of difference. So it's very important that you understand very nicely and very specifically that what generative grammar means here. So all of, if we sum up all, then generative grammar is again a grammar. Obviously it is summarized inside grammar. So grammar is nothing but set of language rules that indicates the structure and interpretation of sentences. Okay. So it is indicating the structure and the interpretation of sentences that native speakers of a language accept as language or as belongings of their language. Now in the beginning of the video, when I was discussing about the origin of generative grammar, I said that the rise of American structuralism led to the, you know, rise of generative grammar as a whole. Now, basically, how can we connect it? Obviously, I've mentioned that uh, generative grammar is different from American structuralism, but we can see here the point native speakers. In case of American structuralism, if you remember, if you have watched my previous video, you remember that how American structuralism, you know, gives stress to the study of study, more study of American Indian languages, the native speakers. All right. So that is how generative grammar and American structuralism are connected in somehow or the other. But basically, the concepts are totally different. Moving on, let's talk about deep and surface structure. Now in linguistics, this is a very important concept and it will form a part of your answer for your essay type answer for generative grammar. So I have given here in the screen, you can see a couple of sentences here, which are given in active and passive voices. Now the first sentence says Charlie broke the window, which is an active voice, obviously. And in passive voice, it can be said as the window was broken by Charlie. Similarly, Jack loves his brother active voice and in passive voice it will be said as his brother is loved by Jack. Now active and passive voice will not go to that part like what are the rules in order to use active and passive voice. Our logic is not that. In particular we are trying to understand what this thing means in linguistics. So some linguistics in particular Noam Chomsky have tried to account for this similarity by posting that these two sentences are distinct. When I say distinct, it means different. That means when I talk about the first two sentences that a Charlie broke the window, which is an active voice, and the second sentence, the window was broken by Charlie, both the sentences are different. They are distinct from each other, and particularly distinct surface forms, all right, that derive from a common deep structure. So basically the underlying deep structure is same and from there we have derived two different and distinct surface forms. All right. So basically this is the definition of surface structure. The distinction between them is a difference in their surface structure. They have different syntactic forms of individual sentence. This superficial difference is called surface structure. Now let's have a look in the next two sentences which are being displayed in the screen. It was Charlie who broke the window and the next is was the window broken by Charlie. Now here we'll try to understand what does a deep structure means. Okay. So different similar types of sentences can be put forward here, but we are taking two, uh, two sentences in particular. So here we see that an abstract level of structural organization in which all the elements determining structural interpretation are represented is called deep structure. All right. Or we can say that the underlying level where the basic components can be represented is called deep structure. Now let's talk about a very interesting topic and concept in linguistics that is called structural ambiguity. Now I think all of you are familiar with the term ambiguity because basically what does the word ambiguity means? It means the idea or the concept of being open towards different interpretations. All right, let us try to understand what this structural ambiguity means in the world of linguistics. So here again, I have taken two sentences. So basically, Arnie bumped into a man with an umbrella. All right, and the second sentence is small boys and girls are playing hide and seek. Now, if I ask you that what does the first sentence means or basically what are the what can be the proper explanation given in the first sentence? then you might come up with two ideas. Let us see what are those two ideas. The first idea will be Annie might have an umbrella. Basically, Annie had an umbrella and she bumped into a man. That can be one way of explaining the first sentence. The second way will be Annie bumped into a man when he happened to be carrying an umbrella. So we can see the same thing happening in the second sentence as well. I'll leave that to you to figure out what is the structural ambiguity in the second sentence. But in the first sentence where we see that the sentence says that Arnie bumped into a man with an umbrella, it basically gives you two different explanations. 
one that arnie was having an umbrella and she bumped into a man and the second is that arnie bumped into a man who happens to be carrying an umbrella so distinct underlying interpretations that have to be represented differently in deep structure is called structural ambiguity now the next topic then the final topic that we are going to cover in today's session is tree diagram which is very very important from your examination perspective as well as your competitive exams i'll be just taking one simple example here but i promise you that i'll be coming up with a more dedicated video regarding tree diagram so let us try to understand what does a tree diagram basically means a tree diagram is a way of representing the hierarchical nature of a structure in a graphical form it is named a tree diagram because the classic representation resembles a tree even though the chart is generally upside down compared to actual tree with the root at the top and the leaves at the bottom all right uh, and the second thing that we can talk about uh, can say about tree diagram is the tree diagram provides us visual representation of the constituents of the corresponding expression so in simple words if i try to put the entire thing into simple words the tree diagram will help you to isolate the different sections of a particular sentence and try to make some sense out of it all right and in the normal actual tree what happens is that the root is obviously at the bottom but in this one the one that we'll be using in linguistics it's exactly the opposite that root will be at the top and the branches and the leaves will be at the bottom all right Uh, so the basic thing that we need in order to understand and implement tree diagram are the symbols which will be displayed which is being displayed in the screen as of now you can see that some of the abbreviations are there which will be required to create a tree diagram so s stands for sentence np for noun phrase pn for proper noun and for noun vp for verb phrase adv for adverb v for verb verb and so on so you can uh, actually pause the screen and take a screenshot or you can actually make notes while listening to the entire lecture so i'm taking a simple example here example is a child can kick a football all right now do remember that when i say that when we talk about tree diagram the various constituents of a sentence will be displayed as the leaves or the branches of the tree so basically the sentence you can see in the diagram that in the topmost corner in the top in the top place of the tree diagram i have written s that means the sentence so the sentence is basically divided into three categories we have np that st states uh, that stands for noun phrase then ox and then we have vp that is your verb phrase again we break things down here we have for np which is basically broken down to article and noun in article we have a all right so basically a is obviously an article and the child is nothing but a noun so the word can from the sentence a child can kick a football is an auxiliary now what is an auxiliary it's uh, the abbreviation that i have used in the diagram is aux auxiliary in grammar is basically a helping element typically a verb that adds meaning to the basic meaning of the main verb in a clause or auxiliaries auxiliaries can convey information about tense mood person and number so it's quite simple that the word can here in the sentence is an auxiliary okay now moving on the third category the third split out of the sentence we can say that verb phrase is further divided into two categories the first is verb so the word kick from the sentence a child can kick a football is obviously a verb so it is included in a verb and then we have further split out of verb phrase into we have noun phrase all right so in noun phrase again you can see two more split ups are there article and noun so the final two words of the sentence is a and football a is obviously an article a and the these are the articles we already know it and finally the word football is a noun so this is a proper tree diagram a very simple example i have used here i hope you have understood the basic concept of tree diagram and what why it is popularly used in linguistics so this is the video guys i hope you have understood the basic concepts of generative grammar i have tried to construct the entire lecture in such a way that it helps you to make notes and uh, obviously this question is very important from your examination perspective do understand that in order to score more marks it will be better for you to answer the question in points all right so obviously when the question generative grammar is asked then you can split out your answer into various categories like the origin of generative grammar 
then what is generative grammar then different types of grammar that is there the contribution of noam chomsky is quite vital that has to be included and different type of struct uh, this one definitions can also be included and yes the tree diagram concept is also vital from this point of view so in case if you have any other doubt regarding this lecture do let us know in the comment section i'll definitely try to address it in the next session till then god bless you and thank you all